Hello everyone and welcome to Camp Diane Made Creations and another tutorial. Today we'll be working on how to crochet a kimono. So as always, I don't like the dawdle, so let's get started. So we're going to work on looking at our tools first. Today we'll be using a yellow um, mainstay 100% uh, acrylic yarn. It is a category 4 and normally you use a 5.5 millimeter hook but today we're going to use my 5, five millimeter hook a pair of scissors of course a measuring tape and at least three stitch markers so I've already made my back panel here and your back panel is fairly simple to make. You want to measure from shoulder to shoulder with a measuring tape or um, however you want to do it. When I first began without a measuring tape, I made it long chain and that's how I measured myself. So if that's how you want to do it, you can do it that way as well. But I came up with 21 and a half inches on my measuring tape so I made 60 double crochets across and I have 31 rows of my uh, double crochets going down so that's what you have to make make that panel and then go ahead and pause this and then come back and come back to me as you can see I took out a couple of stitches so that I can show the process towards the end um, my double crochet does start as does count as a double crochet my beginning double crochet of my rows counts as a double crochet so I've gotten to the end here and we're working on the front panel of this kimono the way that I made this I came up with the pattern is that you can use this particular pattern for any type of sweater that you want to so I'm going to go in and we're going to make some single crochets in the back loop. I'm going to do 20 of those. You chain one and do one single crochet in the back loop of each stitch. This is going to give us, this is where um, your kimono is going to lay on your shoulder. Okay, so now we're on the 20th stitch here. This is our last one of the row. We're going to chain three and then we're going to turn our work. We're basically making the front part, the um, front panel on the right side first. So you want to make it as long as your back panel is. Again, I have 31 rows here. You can make as many rows as you want. And here is 20 of those back loops, double crochet, single crochets. And we want to go all the way down to meet the end of your back panel. So go ahead and go into your first stitch. Your chain three does not count as a double crochet. You want to double crochet all the way across until you get to the end of your row. Chain three, turn your work and continue making your double crochets back and forth. If you want, you can make this stitch. Your three chains count as a double crochet. You just simply skip each stitch. So I'm gonna continue making my way back and forth here. And I'm gonna to come to a point where I'm gonna change up the stitch just a little bit. Nothing too difficult that you can't grasp onto. So when I come back, I will be at that point where I'm gonna make this new stitch. So I went ahead and I made a row of what's called a mesh stitch. It kind of looks like little small boxes. I am After that, I made a row of double crochet simply because I just want to show you what it looks like on starting with a fresh row of double crochets. So now that I've made my last double crochet at the end over there, I'm going to, I'm sorry, in the previous row, I'm going to chain two. And this chain two is only going to, it's not going to count as a double crochet. I'm going to go straight into this first stitch and then chain one and then skip one and then go into the next stitch. The reason we do that is because with your mesh stitch, 
you must start off with an uneven number of stitches but we're starting with an even amount of stitches so i had to have i had to add um a double crochet to that first stitch to make it uneven so that we can do it correctly so i'm going to continue across you just chain one skip one stitch go into your next stitch with a double crochet and keep doing this all the way across until we get to the end when i get close to the end i will come back to you okay so now we're at the end of the row and i went ahead and chain three and we're going to continue on and make another row of this mesh stitch so i'm going to skip a stitch go into the next one chain one make your next double crochet in the next double crochet from the previous row chain one go into the next one and so forth and so on so it's just a repetitive double crochet chain one make another double crochet into the next stitch of a double crochet from the previous row and just do this again all the way across until you get to the end once you get to the end of the row when you've made your last mesh stitch you will have two double crochets to put in there next you do not chain after you make your last mesh stitch you just put one double crochet in each stitch so i'm at that point where i'm putting in this last mesh stitch here I'm going to chain one and make my final mesh here. Now do not chain after this. Go into that final chain, that last three chain from the previous row and put your double crochet in that top stitch. And that's the end of your mesh row. Go ahead and chain two only because our next row is going to be the row that we will make our double crochets all the way across. So now we're going to go into making our double crochets. We've chained three. We're going to skip the first three chains and go right into the mesh stitch. And then make another double crochet in the next double crochet from the previous row. And the next one goes into the next mesh stitch. So you just do this all the way across because now we're filling in those gaps to continue on with our double crochet rows again you don't have to do this part you can just continue with your single your double crochets if you're um, not comfortable with doing this mesh stitch just yet or at least incorporating it into a uh, garment um, uh, into a garment so um, if you want to leave this out you can so I'm going to continue on with these double crochets going all the way across I am not chaining just one single one double crochet in each of these stitches including the mesh stitch so I'm just counting making sure these stitches are correct and they are so I have 20 double crochet stitches across I'm going to chain three turn my work and continue on with my double crochets okay so we have our first panel done this is our right panel of our kimono and it matches up to the back perfectly this is 31 rows of double crochet that includes our mesh stitch in the middle there 31 rows so now i'm going to take this off and cut off this yarn i always like to chain one and then cut the yarn off and pull it through everyone does it differently this will be the only time you'll really use your darning needle for times like this and this is not going to happen that often because for the most part you're going to be crocheting in any yarn any extra strands that are hanging around so now we're going to go into the left side of our panel and we're just going to repeat exactly what we did for the right side so now we're going to make our single crochets in the back loop 
on the left side but in order to do that we must do it on the correct side in order for it to flap over like the right side does and the panel comes towards the front like it's supposed to as you can see here with the right side i have those single crochets in the back loop and the panels coming towards the front we need to do the same thing for the left side so now we're going to go ahead and count out 20 stitches starting from the left side this chain three counts as a double crochet so we will start from there and then once we've counted out 20 we will go ahead and add our stitch marker in the 20th place you only need the stitch marker here um, uh, as you're making your single crochets in the back loop so that you know where to stop so we're going to go ahead and insert our hook here right where this stitch marker is we're going to put our hook our hook in the back loop here and we're going to single crochet all the way across in the back loop um this um go back into that same stitch and make a single crochet and continue all the way across until you get to the end okay so now we have our 20 single crochets in the back loop and now we can continue on so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to chain three and we're going to turn our work and begin working on our double crochets okay so now i have chain three and i've turned my work now i'm going to count my chain three as a double crochet so as always go ahead and skip one stitch and make your double crochets all the way across i'm going to continue on until i reach uh, the point where i get to my stitch marker and we'll continue on okay so now i'm at the end of the row and as you can see that very first row of double crochets flaps over towards the front like it's supposed to it matches the right side um, where there's the other single crochets in the back loop so i'm going to continue making my double crochets going all the way around and i'll go all the way down and i'll have 31 rows when i come back so now i have my 31 rows on each side on the left and right panel i am matching my stitches down at the bottom everything is lined up nice and easy so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come around with some single crochets around the entire garment. This is going to help with the front panels that cross over in the front. We're gonna start at the bottom of the left panel, and that's simply because I want my double my single crochets facing forward. Okay, so we're gonna start, and I'm gonna start on this bottom left panel here on the front part and begin making my single crochets. I am going to add a stitch marker to the first single crochet just so that I know where the beginning of this um, single crochet around um, starts. We want to know when this first starts begin when this first stitch begins so that we can go ahead and slip stitch into this beginning stitch. So I'm starting making my single crochets here. I'm going to meet you at the end because I want to show you what to do to turn around to the side. Now we're at the end and I've made my last single crochet of this row. I'm sorry. Yes, single crochet of the row. I'm going to go into that three chains from the previous row. We're going to add three single crochets into this chain. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can round the corner smoothly and end up on the side of our project with a nice smooth transition. Once I have all three of my single crochets in here, I will continue on. As you're going down the side panels, you're going to have your double crochet rows. You're going to put two double crochets into each, I'm sorry, two single crochets into each double crochet row. So this is our first double crochet row. You're going to skip that little hole there, go into the side with two single crochets, and you're going to do this for every 
row going all the way around your garment. When I get to the end, I'm going to show you what to do there as well, rounding around the corner. Those three single crochets are essential at the end so that your project doesn't for, uh, doesn't fold fold huh, inward as you're going around. So now we're getting closer to that section where the shoulder part is, where you attach your front panel, where you put your um, single crochets in the back loop. So I'm going to put one final single crochet into this last double crochet row here. There's a little stitch. Not a stitch, but a little hole right there. You're going to skip that hole and just immediately go into the next uh, double crochet row with your two double crochets on the side. And just continue making your way down your panel. So now I'm back at that stitch marker. This is going to be my last stitch. I'm going to put one more single crochet right next to that stitch marker. And then I'll go in and do a slip stitch. Remove my stitch marker. And make my slip stitch. So now we've gone all the way around the garment. Um, around the neck area, all the way around, and made our way back around. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We have one row of single crochets going all the way around the entire garment, just to give it a nice little edge on there, and then we can work from there. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to keep coming around my project because I want for this middle section, your collar area, to be a little bit closer. So I'm going to come around with a few more single crochet rows, just like you did here. You don't have to do anything fancy, just one single crochet into each row going around. When you come to the corner edges, um, and you put in that three single crochet in there when you're going around again you come back to that corner again right in the middle of those three single crochets you're going to put another three single crochets so i'm back and i have some more single crochets going around that edge i think so far i have about five or six rows if you want to come in a little further you can most likely i will come in a little bit more so that we can get a little bit more coverage on that neck and have a nice crisscross in the front okay so now we're going to work on your sleeve portion of your project so the best way to do this is to measure around the widest part of your arm that's going to allow for you to have a little bit of breathing room up under your arm so when i did my measurements my uh, arm measured 13.5 inches so now that i have the 13 point five inches for the circumference of my upper arm i'm going to divide that in half and that will give me 6.75 and i stretched it out to about seven inches because again i want a lot for up under my arm when i lift and lower my arm for this kimono i want to have some room up underneath so i decided to go down to about seven inches to start my sleeves so now that i've decided where i'm going to um, start my sleeve i'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker here at the seven inch mark so now that I have this stitch marker here, we're going to go ahead and begin. Now you can either add another stitch marker on the side if you want to, or just use the same one stitch marker and combine those ends together. I'm just going to go ahead and add another stitch marker to the other side. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and start crocheting. And we're going to make some single crochets first to start off our sleeve. I'm just slipping, uh, flipping it around so that I can get to the correct side where I want to start. And we're just going to make our way all the way around until we get to the other end where that other stitch marker is. So insert your hook into that first stitch right where that stitch marker is. And go ahead and add your yarn. 
slip stitch it through chain one go back into that same stitch because this was just attaching the yarn and begin making your single crochets make your single crochets all the way around until you get to the end making sure that you're weaving in that tail and then i'll meet you at the other end okay so we're at the end of the row and where we need to be i'm going to remove these stitch markers from here they are no longer needed so instead of me slip stitching i'm going to go ahead and make a single crochet in this first stitch here i'm going to quickly add my stitch marker because we want to make sure we know where that first stitch is and just continue around with your rows so now we're going to work on this little panel here on the side the side of your uh, kimono so we can close up that gap on the side and we're simply just going to do some quick slip stitches on the inside so you want to turn your garment um, wrong side out um, inside out and go ahead and make your slip stitches all the way across so here I'm just pointing out this very first section here this is where we're going to slip our hook into. It's not really a stitch. This is just more attaching the yarn and closing up that small gap up underneath the arm. So I'm going to slip stitch and chain one. Now we're just basically, we're going to slip stitch in the back loop of each of these single crochets so that we can bring this section together. Um, again, it's real simple. You just go into the back loop of this front panel and then go into the back loop of the back panel and just grab your yarn, pull through and do a slip stitch and just do that all the way across until you get to the end of your project. I'm going to show you one more time in the camera. Go into that back loop of the front panel in the back loop of the back panel and go ahead and do your slip stitch. So continue on until you get to the end and then I will meet you at the end. Okay, so we're on the last slip stitch of this left panel here. I'm going to chain one and cut off my work and pull that through. So that's nice and secure now. And now we can get back to the rest of the project. Okay, so I'm back and I now have about five or six rows for this sleeve. If you want to make it longer, you can. Um, but for tutorial purposes, I'm just going to have about five. I think it's about six rows here. And I'm going to show you how to make the big part of the sleeve, the bell part of your sleeve that goes with the kimono. Now I'm going to make 50 chains. Your cuff should already have 48 chains if you're using the same measurements as me. So with this 50 chains, you will now have 98 chains going around. You're going to have 98 stitches going around once it's all said and done. So for whatever reason, I don't know what happened. Me attaching the yarn got cut off. So basically, I just attached that yarn. Once I made my 50 chains, I attached it and I went around with some double crochets. Now I'm at the chain part where I made my 50 chains. And I'm just going to go in and make these double crochets all the way into each of these 50 chains. Okay, so we're back at the end now, and I have 98 double crochets going all the way around. I'm just going to continue doing this. If you want your, um, your bell sleeve to be wider than that, then you would add more chains in the beginning. I'm just showing me my stitch marker. Um, you don't really need a stitch marker, seeing as you'll be able to tell the beginning of the row, but um, I'm going to go ahead and use a stitch marker anyway because I don't want to continue to go around in a circle. I want to know what my first stitch is of these rows. So I'm going to continue making my double crochets all the way around until I have enough rows that I'm satisfied with. 
Okay, so I have all of my rows done of this double crochet. As you can see, I went ahead and put a nice single crochet edge on there. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. But let me show you the rest of the garment. This section here is your front panel. This is the right side. This is where you started your um, sleeves. And then we increased here by making our... 50 chains so that we can have that nice wide bell look here so i'm just showing you the finished um edges here i went in and i added some white single crochets around the side so now i'm going to show you how to do the belt that goes in the middle to hold your kimono together i went ahead and did these in a griddle stitch and added a nice single crochet white trim to that i made some chains here so that we can tie it in the back and i'm going to go ahead and show you how to make this griddle stitch which is a fairly easy stitch to make and it's also i also have a tutorial for that as well so we're going to chain an uneven, an uneven number of chains. The chains that I have for my kimono, I made about 80 chains. But I'm just going to do a short chain here just to show you for tutorial purposes how to make this griddle stitch. So I made my chains. I went ahead and chained another three. And I am making a single crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. In my next chain, I'm going to make a double crochet. In the next chain is a chain. I'm sorry, the next chain is a single crochet. The next chain is a double crochet. And you're just alternating back and forth between your single crochet and your double crochet until you get to the end. So we're getting closer to the end and I'm just putting these last few stitches here. In your very last stitch, you will put a single crochet chain three turn your work and go ahead and skip this first stitch and go into the next stitch with a single crochet so because this first chain counts as a single crochet you will automatically i mean counts as a double crochet you will automatically skip this chain and go into the next one with a single crochet as you're going back and forth you will always start with a single crochet and end with a single crochet and that's how you do your griddle stitch again i do have a tutorial um, for the griddle stitch if you need to take a look at it i focus i focus exclusively on making this stitch and it's a pretty easy stitch to learn give it a try so thank you for watching this video i hope that you enjoyed it as much as i did i hope that i went slow enough for you and gave enough details so that you can get this kimono just the way you want it Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day.